Week five of the NFL season is upon us. That is right. We are over a quarter of the way through the regular season already. We have got some exciting division rivalry matchups to talk about, Thursday night football reactions, and our quarter season award picks. All that and more coming up on the Gridiron segment. Welcome back into the Gridiron segment. My name is Kyle. I am joined by Rob. We are going to be talking about all things Thursday night football previewing a little week five division rivalry matchup for you talking a little bit about the Patriots locker room and giving you our quarter season award picks before we get to that I have got to do a huge shout out to our sponsor vivid seats look if you are trying to get to a sporting event look no further than vivid seats they are the best ticket buying platform on the market you were talking about guaranteed tickets and if you use the link in our description, you get to save yourself even more money. So get yourself to Vivid Seats and sit vividly. Now, we have got to talk about the game that was, I am of course referring to Falcons and Buccaneers. Thursday night football game that was enjoyable to watch. I didn't know they existed, Rob. I didn't think this was possible, but here we are. Give me your thoughts on that game. And, and so, they're far and in between because uh but I, I will say this that it that first half i thought they were gonna put up 100 points after seeing all that stuff man like it was just like both defenses couldn't stop the common cold um and kirko chains <laughs> that uh Kirk, man bro he i think he's severely underrated people don't give him enough credit for his ability to just like uh, Albeit he's not one of the most successful quarterbacks when it comes time to go in the playoffs, but man, when he needs to put up the numbers, he has to put up the numbers, man. And and last night really was he was now he's thirteenth all time in passing yards in a game with five hundred and nine. So crazy, crazy. Uh, he, I, I'm going to be honest with you, this may be a, a, a crazy take. I don't know if I should say it now or not. I I think either them or the Vikings is my Super Bowl favorite. Because there's not a lot of um, weaknesses with these teams. I, if you if you had to give me a, 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 a put a gun to my head and you made me choose, obviously I will go with uh, Sam Darnold and and the Vikings right now because of the fact that like that defense of the Vikings is just they're amazing and led by Brian Florence. But going back to my God, man, like how do you even stop that offense? You got. Drake London, who's basically catching everything in the side of a phone booth, and Darnell Mooney, which you are very aware of, oh, yeah. as, as being no. a Bears fan, that that like, man, he's really he's finally starting to show Darnell up. Mooney. I I could talk about Darnell Mooney all day. Like he is in the perfect role for his skill set because he was forced to be a wide receiver one in Chicago, and he doesn't have that skill set. He still put up good numbers because he's a good player. When he went to the wide receiver two position in Chicago, his quarterback was Justin Fields. Justin Fields wasn't getting to a second read for the for the life of him in Chicago. So obviously the production went way, way down. Now he is with a quarterback in Kirk Cousins who processes and reads defenses and can get to multiple reads. So he's going to produce a lot more because Darnell Mooney is still a good wide receiver. So it's really exciting, but also bittersweet to see Darnell Mooney have the outburst of two touchdowns and 105 receiving yards. Is it crazy that I think Kirk Cousins is a top seven quarterback? And, I, and I've always been a type of person that when you go to say Kirk Cousins, you're like, oh, Kirk Cousins, it's a Ryan Tannehill. It's Ryan Tannehill, it's a Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, Kirk Cousins, I respectfully uh, rescind that notion that I will never say something like that to, about you again. But I will also say this, Kyle Pitts finally looks like he's he's Kyle Pitts that we thought coming out of Florida. The kid that basically, that to be. the guy that was basically regarded as one of the best tight end prospects ever coming out of college. And then you, who else do you got? You got Robinson out of the backfield, right? Man, like how do you stop this offense? I, I don't think you really can. I think that you really, what you'll have to do is you'll have to find an offense similar to them that can put up the points. But like I said, man, the only teams I really can realistically say keep up with them is the four, the 49ers, if they're at their best, which honestly, based off what I've seen as of late, no. I don't even or, know if like 
if the 49ers can even stay healthy. Like, that's the faith that I don't have in the 49ers. That they are just injured all over the place. Or the Vikings. Or, I mean, or the Chiefs only. And the only reason I mention the Chiefs is because we all know that the, 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 the refs are the 12th man. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen on what are they, they should playing? realistically I, I hate to bring this in the chiefs up but like they should realistically be one and three right now oh yeah no the, the, i mean there's a world where they don't win any of the games that they've played yet or played so far i should say uh it's disgusting i hate it i don't like seeing it i want to i want to i want a new team to i want the lions to win the super bowl is that too much to ask like no, that's what not, i want man, I, and I think the biggest thing that would be holding back a Lions team would be like Dan Campbell's decision making in critical situations because he really is just balls to the wall. But he going back to the 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 <laughs> Falcons versus uh, Buccaneers game, the first half was literally just like let's see who can stop. And both defenses couldn't stop anything. They that you could run the ball, you could throw the ball. I mean, I were both teams playing in zones. I I couldn't re re I didn't actually pay enough attention in terms of like t deciphering what kind of formations they were lining up in. But it seemed like the middle of the field was just like wide open. There was no there no there was absolutely no defense for that first half, which is not what you expect when you have Raheem Morris and Todd Bowles running the ship on the, for these teams. Like you expect at least some level of defense. Speaking of defense, though, it was really, it was really fun to see Levante David do that towards the towards the end of the game. That was that was just grand. I love when middle linebackers make big plays because they're like the running back of the defense at this point and they don't get a whole lot of love unless they are like fred warner truly transcendent like a roquan smith and even he doesn't play in the middle um so that's just really fun to see but speaking of big plays man i i think we need to start putting a little bit more respect on baker mayfield because base basically what he's done since he's become a uh, a buck and i was a little bit concerned when it, his offensive coordinator went off to carolina right uh forget his damn name uh canalis Canales, and we're, we all know what Canales is as an offensive coordinator. But my my biggest concern is once Canales left, I was like, okay, once he leaves, I don't know how well this Baker will do with this this current situation because it seems like every other situation he's went through, he he has his his ups and downs. Like when ABP was with him with the Browns, when um, obviously Canales with the Bucks, and Sean McVay went for like a cup of coffee with the Rams. But I think it's now time to start not only putting respect on Baker Mayfield, but honestly start putting him in the top 10 um, in the NFL as a quarterback. Because who was also regarded in the top 10 before? Uh, well, Trevor Lawrence. And I'm not going to go on a tangent about, about him, but I'm sorry. Your, re your record and based off your reflection of how you've played the last couple of years, you're not a top 10 quarterback. You, I don't even think he's a he's top missed, 15 he quarterback. Wide open touchdowns this year, people. Like, we have to stop the Trevor Lawrence apologies. I think Baker Mayfield and Kirk Cousins has have cemented as the as a top 10 quarterbacks. And and I, I and you can, I can confidence, confidently say that because you could probably take Jalen Hurts out of that conversation in top 10. Um, and, and Trevor Lawrence, you could easily insert those two who have been way more consistent and electric nonetheless and we saw like a little bit of a slow start from kirk cousins and everyone was like oh he's washed he's this he's that no it like people need to realize it is a completely new system that he's learning he was in minnesota for years and years so obviously there's gonna be a little bit of a ramp up period especially for a veteran who doesn't do a whole lot in the preseason like look man it is Look, man, when you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the defend to uh back-to-back -to -back defending champs and you're a Kyle Pitts pass interference away from winning the game, come on, man. Like he, Kirk Cousins, I think the biggest thing with Kirk Cousins, I, I'm not really big on the Vikings previous regime, I believe, when he was over there. I think if he could just play within his own and just my biggest thing is when sometimes when the lights are the brightest, if he could just not shy away from a moment. Which he proved last night he can be that dude. 
he can really i mean like i think super bowl is is not out of the question especially when you have an offense that like if it can stay healthy because you go look at the landscape of the nfl a lot of teams across the nfl you go look at the chiefs they lost they, they have like half their roster on offense missing and if they, honestly if they don't have their defense they're not making it so and, and then you go look at the falcons they have a relatively healthy roster so if they are, if they're able to stay healthy and they are able to play at this level that they've been playing at i cannot see a team other than maybe the vikings or 49ers that can realistically keep up with them no i definitely agree now We've been talking a lot about the good end of the league. We got to shift gears just a little bit, talk about our end of the league, where our teams reside. Uh, there's drama in the Patriots locker room, apparently, but or also there. apparently not. Uh, it's it's been reported by by certain peoples that there was, I guess, mutiny Lazar. used. It's it's ridiculous. The to use the word mutiny, first of all. That's a very strong word to just throw around a professional sports organization. Like that we are a quarter of the way through a season for this coach's first season. And you are basically putting him on watch. That's that's kind of throwing Gerard Mayo under the bus and in a way that's not accurate because multiple players have commented about this being like, this is not the case gerard is our guy yeah and it, it one of the players being one of the, the captains of team jabril peppers and we all know that if he has something to say he'll say it my biggest thing is this it just i'm not evan lazar is the person reported on it he's highly regarded as with someone that's so i can't tell you how i feel about in terms of like who i think how how true this is but i will say that there are plenty of like other boston sports media like people out there that are trying to look at for every little reason to try to oh fire this guy fire that guy guys like I, i've been telling patriots fans since the beginning of the season this is four or five games into a new season when you have alex van pelt that some felger and maz i just recently listened to it this morning i really would probably i don't know how many expletives i yelled at my radio as as if it's listening to me but they want they want play they want coaches they want front office they want all these people fired like the the biggest thing is this it just doesn't make any sense that like i respect belichick believe me six super bowls at, as a head coach it's not it's, he's the greatest coach of all time however one of the biggest things and one of the biggest deficiencies that he has is his ego sometimes gets the best of him he thought he could build a roster and keep it as very minimal as possible the problem is if you do not have the quarterback you can't you can't sustain you can't sustain success with with um minuscule talent talent across the board so when you go and look at the roster that basic and elliot wolf had to work with basically plucking whoever it is out of free agency which by the way like people talk about hey you could got xyz left left tackle the best tackle on the market was tyron smith obviously yeah. he wanted to go to a situation where he was looking for a ring and obviously for it, it's like the most obvious thing to 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 put out there that the patriots were are in no position to be competing for a ring presently so when i think of avp that i also heard being brought up of, about this this probably goes hand in hand with the mutiny that, but man boston sports media man like i don't understand what their motives are they're in a rebuild this stuff doesn't happen overnight and, no. and it's gonna take a while so i but also what pisses me off not evan lazar i think this i'm stop subtracting him from the person that originally reported this mutiny when i speak of like this and i hate to be going at people when i think of greg bedard or Felger and Mask or, or these any of these guys that just like always a negative person what I think that they fail to do is actually do their research on the people that we bring aboard so they talk about how AVP was not a good signing first of all if you're going to bring in someone new you can't really expect them to basically make a, 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 such a great product out of a hodgepodge basically thrown together roster especially a lot of the a lot of the talent coming from your rookies so like it, it's 
and injuries across that offensive line. I will say Elliot Wolf could have done a better job getting maybe a left tackle in the draft, but it is what it is. He had really the cover was bare when Belichick left. But going back to AVP, he basically has put together what he possibly could this offseason. Um, I've been bit pretty critical as of late, and the only reason I'm critical is because of the freaking left tackle that uh, Elliot Wolf didn't draft. But AVP has not much to work with. AVP, my biggest thing is this. Anywhere he's been, as a quarterback's coach for the for the Packers, Aaron Rodgers wins at MVP. As as a, uh, I guess he was an offensive assistant. I can't remember his actual uh, designation for the Browns. And he basically made Baker rebound had, and, and go for basically half his interceptions. Oh, pretty much career year at that point. So basically, wherever AVP has gone, he has been successful. And I will also say this. People are talking about how he's scheming up things. First of all, how are you supposed to scheme up things when your quarterback is known to throw 130 yards on a good day? And and your and your offensive line, I look, I think he could do a better job. He could get the ball out quicker, but like it is what it is. Offensive line can is dead last. 54 point like seven uh pressure rate, which is literally the worst. Hmm. So he's also combating that. He's also combating that he's he's developing a Drake main. And I don't know if yeah, anybody's like actually his priority. I was just gonna say it. Like Alex Van Pelt's time and and focus is split right now. Exactly. And I don't know if anybody's actually watched any recent videos. Uh, I don't know if anybody's gone on my page and watched any recent videos. By the way, Patriots, but instead of the T at the end, it's a 7S. Go look at the video. His footwork in the pocket is l pristine. The fact that he was able to do that in what? A month, a couple months? That was notoriously known coming out of the draft as being something that was almost not reconcilable. Mm -hmm. What AVP has done thus far is nothing to, 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 to really go crazy about it. He's done a great job. Like it, he's done he, he, for what he has to work with. He's done a great job. And I will stress this towards Patriots fans. I will stress this towards NFL fans in general. Do not judge the Patriots off this year and based off and judge our coaches because of the fact that it's not looking successful now. Judge them when they surround the team with talent and then we'll make that assessment. However, based off what I've seen so far, AVP has done with what he's done perfectly. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the just the rush to judgment for those high profile positions is always so fascinating to me because especially when you're given the context of what's going on in new england like it was understood this is gonna be a process this is going to be something Brother, we're the las up. vegas odds had us at four and a half wins as our top like like what, what are we doing here we they're expecting about it's like oh it's going off the rails it's like you're already halfway, not halfway, but you already got a win. Brother, we were like competitive in two out of our four games. So, yeah. I mean, I, this is a team that's regarded as a team that should be competing for the first overall pick. I don't think they're that bad. I don't think they're that bad. Can you imagine Travis Hunter and Christian Gonzalez? Cover my biggest day. thing though brother is uh, they need a left tackle and unless you go and get a left tackle on free agency which cam robinson out of the jacksonville jaguars is highly regarded as the best left tackle going into free agency but i don't like he has one of the highest pressure rates right now so he's not he ain't it so left tackle in the first round unfortunately unless they can get a team that has multiple first round picks and they can trade back we're both looking at left tackle in the first round. I feel like both of our teams, the Bears offensive line is, it's worse somehow. It looks worse. I don't know. I don't, if, know. I don't know if it's even possible. And now there's even more injuries. So it's going to look even worse, worse. So that's great. We do this. This is what we do. We this, ruin. This is quarterback. why, this is why this I is will say do. this. This is why I say this, man. You guys have a multitude of talent on the offense. You have one of the most talented rosters in, on offense. But one thing I think y'all did that we didn't do is you threw your rookie out there right away as opposed to what we did is put him on the bench. 
and, and I think really up any level of like quick game, get the ball out fast to hide he, that efficiency. The problem is, I think he's have like there needs to be a coming to Jesus. Basically, he needs to they need to sit him down. And I, the thing is, though, I don't know if Caleb Williams has the mental fortitude to be able to handle something like that. We it, coming out of the draft, man. It, about him, it was like he's electric, great guy, but. He, the, the pressure really could get to that kid. And I mean, they, I don't know how he's going to be like what y'all are going to be able to do. I think he'll, he could eventually rebound, but it's. He's still making I mean, like awesome fucking throw. Like that's the thing. The touchdown to DJ Moore and the third of that third down conversion to Cole Komet were difficult throws that he made very, very well. So you like, you see the flashes and you see why the bears did what they did but you don't see the consistency that you see from Jaden. but then you also see the narcissism that comes from him when he goes to his punter and says he's not going to be punting that much this season oh, i mean I sometimes a little bit of humble pie goes league. a long way what happened nfc special teams special teams player of the week tory taylor not going to be punting a whole lot <laughs> Oh, man. I got to get out of that. I got to get out of this. It's in a funk now. We got to talk about quarter season award picks. Because uh, I know that my uh, offensive rookie of the year pick is going to make me sad. I'm just going to get out of the way right now. Um, it's Jaden Daniels. Because it's a quarterback award at this point. Now, who do I think it should be? Probably Malik Neighbors. Because he's actually like leading a wide receiver. Like a t top five in a wide receiver stat this season so far. Who it's going to be is going to be Jaden Daniels. I respectfully uh, disagree. I think Jaden Daniels, especially the pace he's on, which is unprecedented at 82%. I think it's 82.1, which was posted on the House Call Sports Instagram. Uh, I It was 82.1%, which is, I mean, like, that's insane. I don't think it's sustainable, but based on, he, man, the kid makes the most craziest throws, regardless of him having... Tara McLaurin. I think what um, Kingsbury is doing with, with Jaden Daniels and that I mean that goes to show you that if you just give maybe a wide receiver one I mean coming into the season Washington's uh, the commander's offensive line was regarded as one of the worst in the NFL but yet it's somehow like I think it, should, it goes to show you what a wide receiver that could really spread the field can do so maybe yeah. it, it was a little bit overblown about what the capabilities of that offensive line is but yeah Jaden well, Daniels is my offensive rookie of the year here's the thing the Bears have plenty of offensive weapons and a terrible offensive line the difference is you're not necessarily afraid Caleb Williams is going to take off for 60 yards for a touchdown so mm -hmm. you can rush Caleb Williams Jaden Daniels y y if you get caught with your pants down he'll just because he'll be a gone decisive runner of the football like, that's the thing. He puts his foot in the dirt and goes when he decides to run. So he's dangerous, and defenses already recognize that. Defensive Rookie of the Year. This one's tough for me. I like, I really do like a lot of what I'm seeing from Quinyon Mitchell. I think that's where I'm going to end up going just because he is ending up getting a lot of I don't want to say favorable matchups because it, there's not really a favorable matchup in the NFL. Everyone's very good, but he's drawing a lot of wide receiver twos and he's performing very well. Um, I, I want to say he's giving up like a somewhere in the fifties in terms of passer rating allowed. Uh, it's, it's been very, very impressive out of Quinion Mitchell. For I me. feel like you just, it may be great minds think alike. What Quinion Mitchell coming out of the draft was highly regarded, at least in the house call uh, atmosphere, the best cornerback out of this draft. And I'm not saying he's quite there yet, but you could see the necessary, the, the tools and that, that he has in, in his arsenal to be, I, I'm, I'm going to say great. Like, I think he can be fantastic i think he can easily be within the next year or two a top 10 cornerback i think he could be in the next five years top five cornerback um and he's i mean if, if the eagles can kind of get their head out of their ass this kid can be special but yeah i man like so far two for two based off like i may have the other awards different than you but so, thus far we're kind of thinking on the same wavelength all right defensive player of the year i 
Okay, I, I gotta get this one. Uh, I've gone back and forth so many times. Um, I'm gonna start with the person who I'm not picking, and that's Aiden Hutchinson. Um, I think Aiden Hutchinson is one of, if not game record, the best game records in the league. Like he can single-handedly take over a game in a way that you only see like TJ Watt do. Miles Garrett. Like these are this is the level of just havoc that Aiden Hutchinson can can unleash on a backfield. Now, Fred Warner is just special. I'm going with Fred Warner. I don't and think this- it's gonna end, I don't think it's going to end up being the case. They like I can't remember the last time a middle linebacker was a defensive player of the year. I but I I want it to be so bad. And this is where we go and part our ways like Vin Diesel and Paul Walker and Fast and the Furious, brother. I think, respectfully, if you go look at the matchups, this cornerback has not given up 15-plus yards on a reception. Being that, yes, it was a breakdown in coverage. Kyle Duggar missed out. If you are not adding, he didn't make the assignment the right way. So that was on Kyle Duggar. Christian motherfucking Gonzalez has put every corner. I, look, he had a little bit of a bad game against Garen Wilson. Um, but, I mean, a bad game for him is giving up 20 yards and a touchdown. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. That's pretty freaking impressive. He put DK Metcalf, who he gave up, up like three receptions. And, and, and look, man, this this kid... Uh, I personally, maybe it's just bias. I think he's the best cornerback in football already. No, and I think that just... Nothing. Thank you. Of, well, of course, you can think that because you're a Bears fan, which I will respect. I don't, I don't even think it, it's a fact. Okay, well, that's, no, that's, that's, that's an opinion. Fact. That, well, that's a well. verifiable fact. Over with, with 2020, over 2023, cornerback one, and he's going to continue that this year. Okay, well, Jalen Johnson's definitely a hell of a cornerback, but based off what... Christian Gonzalez is doing in what year one because I don't count last year. This is pretty much year. This kid it's is. A, I mean, it's who do you freshman year? Who do you really put above him? Right? If you, I, I can, I, I can respectfully give you Jalen Johnson. Jalen. Then after that, what sauce? Sertan? No, no, not sauce. I would say maybe Sertan. So, PS two is very good as well. So I personally, uh, okay. I, I, Maybe 1A, 1B, 1C. Like, you could literally put all three of those guys at number one, which you probably won't because you like your Jalen Johnson, and I will probably rebuttal with, I think, Christian Gonzalez is the best cornerback in football. So I will say, <laughs> man, look, it, it seems like every other week that he has put every cornerback in a in a blender. I mean, every wide receiver in a blender. I mean, last year, I mean, Tyreek Hill – AJ Brown was the only one that gave him business. And I when I mean gave him business, 47 yards. That's the most he's ever given up. Uh man, respectfully. And I'm not I know we're talking about this year, but he's he's very good. And but he that's why he gives my uh defensive player of the year. But if I had yeah, to yeah. give a, a, a I guess a second award, it probably would be Aiden Hutchinson. I mean, the guy is just like he's unbelievable. He's, he how stupid! I think he might be the best pass rusher in football now. It could, oh, and it's crazy oh, coming out of the yeah. draft, brother. Coming out of the draft, people thought he was gonna be a bust. No, not me. No, he's well, special. If you if you watched any of his Michigan tape, you would know. Yeah, but Michigan could be hit or miss. But anyways, that's true. That's true. All right, let's talk about offensive play of the year. This one's a little. I'm. I, not many people have a lot of noise for this, which I don't feel like is fair because Nico Collins is doing some really fun stuff. And I think Nico Collins is going to end up winning Offensive Player of the Year. And also, this is where I, I go. I'm actually going to give it to... I'm going to give Sam Darnold the MVP, and I'm also going to give him Offensive Player of the Year. I don't know if that ever really Ooh, happens, but I think he has... A couple times with Tom and um, maybe AP and Mahomes. Yeah, so like, well, we all know that Mahomes hasn't. I'm not. Let me not go on a tangent with Mahomes, but look, Sam Darnold is like. I think he finally found the right spot. It's just unfortunate because he may like the Vikings are going to have to make a critical decision. 
eventually, but with J.J. McCarthy. But Sam Darnold has my Offensive Player of the Year and MVP right now. Um, I would put Josh Allen as my second, and and uh, like it's it's not even that big of a gap to be honest, because Josh Allen, he's the best quarterback in football. It, it, I, I'm sorry, he is, because when you look at the stats. And I know I'm going a little bit on a, a little bit tangent, but like when you look at the stats, he hasn't had a, a, a yards after catch, per, I guess, a ranking for his receivers really outside of like, I think 27. But then you look at Mahomes and they haven't gone lower than third. So Josh Allen is ho- always constantly having to play Clark. You know what? Fuck it. Josh Allen is is my MVP and in, in offense. I'm glad, you, I take, I'm glad, I take I'm glad you said that because you talked to because, me. In first. Well, <laughs> because like man, Clark Kent and we all were under the. I mean, I even said it, man. I thought the damn Bills were missing the playoffs this year, man. There, look, if if Sean uh, McDermott could just remove his head from his ass in critical moments, what is his deal? Like, why can't he function with I don't know a lead or in any? He's out of the same school that a Kyle Shanahan is. That oh, yeah, I don't know. There you go. But yeah, Josh, I take it back. Josh on is that dude, and that pains me. I that pains well, me to say that. But we talk, we talk about the MVP, and it's a quarterback award. And you look around, quarterback play is relatively down this year outside of... I mean, Tom Brady Warner. came out recently in, a, in an interview and saying that these 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 quarterbacks, and I, I can't disagree with him, they no. don't know how to read defenses. Cover two seems to, or too high safety seems to be their kryptonite. Meanwhile, the older quarterbacks back in the day would just, back in the day, Philip Rivers, Eli Manning. Eli Manning's not a good example. Ben Roethlisberger, <laughs> Tom Brady, all these quarterbacks, <laughs> Paid Manning would, would like basically, Philip Rivers would break. You couldn't even, I mean, they would decimate those, those, oh, those coverages. So fun. What a fu- what a fun era of football when it was those quarterbacks. God. Damn. I, I think the quarterback position's at a, at a deficit, and I really think that like, yeah, I'm not gonna go on a tangent about Mahomes. Let me not do that because this is not gonna become a Mahomes episode. Is he just like just the thought of this guy being like lauded when it just pisses me off? I think it's I think it's very telling of how much the league favors. Mahomes and the Chiefs. Just he has six touchdowns and five interceptions. Man, the FanDuel came out and said that he was the MVP right now. He's, which in, is he's in the MVP right now, apparently. Well, you I know what? That, that kind of goes that? hand in hand with what we're talking about. The fa- FanDuel recently, I, I, I'm talking to our audience right now. FanDuel recently came out and said that Patrick Mahomes is the MVP of the NFL. This is the same quarterback that has six touchdowns and five interceptions. He is playing his worst football ever. Period. Like he, he and and I don't back. want. And my biggest thing is this, Nick Wright. If you ever come across this video, you piss me off to no end. This you talk so about how Mahomes has a makeshift cast of wide receivers and all these things at his disposal. I rebuttal. That's Brady's career, pretty much. He didn't have a Pro Bowl receiver until year seven. And who was that? That was Randy Moss, who had three touchdowns and 500 yards a year prior. Oh, when we talk about Mahomes, man. Record. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, Randy Moss had 23 touchdowns that year, and Brady passed for 50 like touchdowns. That, that was the level that Tom Brady could have played at his whole career if he had, oh, I don't know, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. No, yeah, he, he was throwing to David game. Patton and, and, and Givens. And, what are we doing? Let's not go on a tangent, but it kind of it kind of went hand in hand with the MVP conversation. It just goes to show you that the league is favoring. I'm tired of it, man. It's just a little bit too too apparent that they're trying to do something with this whole, like, the, man, like we got to stop doing this. Stop, get, stop throwing. Like, I get it. Like, maybe you could have got away with the whole Bengals one, that, the whole pass interference, but the Kyle Pitts one was clearly a pass interference. Crazy. And at this point, I'm like, I'm tired. I'm also tired of these teams putting their foots in their mouths and putting them in the cold. Was blatant too, but I guess not. It's ridiculous. 
All right, we got to talk. Let's talk about the Bengals a little bit because they got a fun matchup. There's a lot of fun matchups in week five. I'm going to talk about just a couple of them as we get going here. I'll pull up my pull up my notes. Boom. Boom. We have got, I think, five or six divisional matchups. You've got the uh, Jaguars and Colts playing. If the Jaguars don't win that, I think Doug Peterson's on the hot seat. Miami and the Patriots are playing. That's a you got the two worst offenses in the NFL. Game. That's going to be one of the games. There of, may be three time. points scored that game. There <laughs> may like, it, it may be three points, and that'll be the victor. Three nothing. God. You've got Skylar no, Thompson really leading the 32nd ranked offense versus the Patriots re- leading the 31st. Th- that game is exciting to me because there's a there's a scoregami potential with it. I feel like because whenever you have really low scoring offense and you have at like at least one good defense, you could get like involved with some safeties and some scoregamis. And I hope that that happens. You also it may have, end three to two. Uh, You're gonna think it's a soccer match. Oh, I hope so. We also have Raiders taking on the Broncos. That's that's just, you know, bad teams being feisty against each other. It's usually a fun game. Check it out. Also have the Cardinals taking on the 49ers. Should be Ooh. a relatively should be a relatively simple game for the 49ers to get back on track with how the Cardinals have played as of recently. But the Niners are really injured, so I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's a weird one for sure. Uh, Browns have to visit the Commanders. That's not a divisional matchup. It's just kind of going to be interesting to see if the once great pass defense that the Cleveland Browns had will decide to show back up or if Jaden Daniels is just going to keep on rolling. Bills and Texans is probably the most exciting game, I would say. Uh, But the Texans have kind of got to get back on track a little bit as well. We, however... We're going to talk about the Ravens and the Bengals. Both teams feel like they are teetering one way or another. And it feels like with this game, it's going to be a big deciding factor in how their season ends up because it's happening in the division. So you've got tiebreaker implications happening. Both these teams are hopeful to make the playoffs. They're not playing like it necessarily. Uh, although the Ravens absolutely showed up and showed out against the Bills, which everyone was kind of lauding as, okay, this is the power in the AFC right now because the Chiefs aren't, they're just squeaking away with games because of the refs. So obviously we have to pick somebody who's not doing that. And then the Ravens, you know, won by 25 points on Sunday Night Football. So we know that the potential is there. However, I can't really overlook losing to the Raiders it's just not something that I can be like, okay, that's fine. It's the Raiders. I'm going to be honest. You lost to Gardner Minshew. That's going to raise some eyebrows for me. Bengals, you're also really, really on the on thin ice. Yes, you took the Chiefs down to one point, and you probably should have won that game. And no one really was expecting Jaden Daniels to be as good as he was. But you also lost to the rebuilding Patriots. And yeah, you have a win. You're not winless, but you beat the Panthers. It's what you should have done to the Patriots. You'd be two and two right now, and you wouldn't have to win against the Ravens to keep your play. I mean, keep your playoff hopes alive. Because if you're one and four, trying to dig out of that in the AFC North, woof. Good luck, man. And this is where I think the nail goes in the coffin. And that being that the Ravens finally figured it out, man, how to utilize Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson together. And I think it's 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 fire sale time in in, in Cincinnati. They're going to be either selling you selling want, one of those you receivers. Higgins. You want T. Higgins? Uh, selfishly, yes, I do want T. Higgins. But that's not <laughs> why I think that this game is going to be an ass whooping. To remember, I just think that that run defense for the Cincinnati Bengals. Really only having Trey Hendrickson basically on the outside, but he's not a defensive tackle. You do not have the powers that be between the tack- the defensive tackle, that nose tackle that can stop that run. And you have one of the baddest motherfuckers that's basically you need to throw a whole fridge at to tackle. That being Derek King Henry. You're not you're not stopping him. He will he mark my Ooh. words. 
Mark my word, he's rushing for over 170 yards and two touchdowns this game. And mm. and the reason why I say that, that you're going to have to deal with him, but you're also going to have to deal with Lamar Jackson's legs. And I think that just that's just one puzzle that Sherlock Holmes is not going to be able to solve in the Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bengals. So I just think this game is not going to be close. No, I think, you know... I disagree with you on the, on it being close. That's it's always fun seeing divisional matchup, especially in the AFC North, because they know each other so well. But the, you're right. There's not really uh, there has not been enough that I've seen from the Bengals' run defense to make me think that they stand a chance at stopping a any level of like a read option with Derrick Henry and Lamar. Are you kidding me? No, they're not going to be. I think the biggest anything. thing, man, is like the, the there was a level playing field when Lam it was just Lamar Jackson. I think, Absolutely. man, King me. King Henry is there, and I think he is the difference that that's going like that will teeter this this scale. And I just think stopping him, man, it, it's just it's like it's a tall task, man. It, he's a refrigerator on wheels. Now here's the thing, but whenever the and the Bengals always give up the run early, that causes them to have to pass the ball, and. Be this several this is, bits this is, right this in, is around the time the Bengals offense starts to pick up in the season this is when it starts to happen I have a weird feeling it's gonna happen this Sunday I could be very wrong that's indigestion I you know I think the I, I think the Baltimore Ravens really miss Mike McDonald right now I think the Bengals are going to have a very good offensive showing but I don't think it's going to be enough. They're just not going to be able to have the ball enough because, frankly, the Ravens are going to play bully ball, run out a lot of clock, and just pound the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock. That's all they're going to do. And the, the firepower just simply will not be enough on the Bengals' offensive side of the ball. I, it's, I, I'm going to go with like a 27-24 Ravens. I'm going to go 24-10. Ooh. Be honest, I, I don't think I think it's a two-score win, and and I normally, man, when I predict things, they, more than more times than not, I'm not. I'm, don't call me Nostradamus, but I, man, like I just don't. I, there's too much. I mean, the contract situation with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. You're not a. You're in. Your inability to stop the run is Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow with his wrist. There's too many variables in this equation that gives me like I have. You have. I have all those variables, but the only variable I had was can the can the Ravens figure out how to utilize Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, and now they figured it out. Well, but I think I, the Bengals miss Brian Callahan quite a bit. I think that he was a lot more uh, helpful to Zach Taylor than Zach Taylor might want to admit. Yeah. No, it's I I don't think it's going to be a Bengals win which sucks because i always will kind of just root for the bengals because it's a fun team like they've this is the thing when people analyze the bengals as they're at their ceiling because they have consistently just overperformed for what they have they've never had what anyone has called a super bowl roster they've had like super bowl they've had a super bowl appearance that was in a year that they massively overperformed and Quite frankly, when you have a quarterback like Joe Burrow, I do still have quite a lot of faith in Joe Burrow because he is... That makes one, one of us. Of those, dude, at the end of the day, I think that he is one of those few quarterbacks that doesn't necessarily apply to the whole Tom Brady quarterbacks don't read defenses anymore because he's doing that. He does that and did that. And My biggest thing, man, is the best abilities availability. I get he's a great quarterback, but he can never stay healthy. Help. He's just not helped. I can't put him in a, like an elite tier with like a Josh Allen, a Lamar Jackson. I want, I don't even think he's a top five quarterback anymore. It'll be interesting to see. Like Lou Anarumo is a good defensive coordinator for the Bengals, but he can't make magic happen when he doesn't have the pieces to stop the like. There's just, there's just nothing there that he can do. It's not a scheme that's going to solve this.
there's just a huge talent deficiency in well the he definitely ravens can score on the talent. ravens you definitely can score on the ravens i just I don't think, think i think the time of possession is going to be critical to what this that this how this game's going to go and when you yeah. don't when you don't have the ball in your hands joe burrow and you're having to sit on the sideline 90 percent of the game like i think this is a game where just feed you don't not even Lamar Jackson rushing the football. Just give the ball to Derrick Henry and let him rush it down their throat for four quarters. Run through a motherfucker's face. Like this is the strategy. Run through a motherfucker's face. Oh yes, my sir. gosh. There's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun games for week five. I I'm just praying, hoping and praying that the Bears do not lose. No I comment. Can, I cannot have the Bears lose to the Panthers. I will die inside. Oh, if, that's who you have. That is who we have. We well, should. Well, I'm win. predicting a Panthers win because you we guys. Should, do. We should end week five, three and two. That's what should happen. Is that that's nice. Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. It's the Bears. Andy Dalton has made heat, man. Talk about rebounding, man, and you're about to lose to one of the worst teams in football. I don't want to talk about well, it. At, well, here's the thing, though. We perceive them as one of the worst teams in football, but we found out Bryce Young is just not ready. Yeah. Yeah, he might stink, too. I don't know, man. I, I, I think we, we've seen what happens when you have Sam Darnold there and all these other quarterbacks. Who knows? But then again, Andy Dalton, he's, he's doing his thing, man. Oh man! If, if Andy Dalton wins his, well, I if the Bears lose, uh, I, I will be laughing in your face. All of his revenge games. That's that's the only thing that will make me happy this season. If the Bears lose to the Carolina Panthers, all I need to happen after that is uh, the Bears to you know lose every single game, so we can just draft whoever the best fucking offensive line t- prospect is. Please no, 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 that's for us. Swiss cheese. It's tissue paper. There's no pass pro. There's no run blocking. DeAndre Swift just decided to have one good game, but he has been a waste of money. That could have gone to an offensive lineman. You got that out? You good? I'm good. Okay. Good. Will Campbell's ours. Better go on. Oh, no, 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 no. Will Campbell's ours. You can have Kelvin Banks. Uh, you know what? We'll trade you our first rounder for Mike and Wenu. How about that? I will settle for Jalen Johnson. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That is uh, going to do it for our episode this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you catch all the action for week five. As I said, a lot of fun divisional games. A lot of games that are going to end up going under the radar. We have our first London game. It's the Jets and the Vikings. The Vikings are going to absolutely roll because I don't have any faith in the Jets. None of us do. That is not allowed at the House Call Sports. Unless your name is Gage, then we'll just make fun of you. Until the next time, that is Rob. My my name is Kyle. It has been so One second, one second. Thank you for 4.8K on freaking Facebook. Let's go. It's been awesome watching all the growth, man. Like, Make sure also you're subscribed on all platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. Uh, Is there another one? I'm missing one. Thread, maybe. I guess. It threads. I'm not 1k on there so we're doing something right i need to get on threats i keep on just seeing the suggestions and and everyone popping up of like hey you should join threads i'm like all right bootleg like twitter it's, it's, <laughs> it's x actually until the next time that is rob my name is kyle peace